Definitely an excellent cut on that one. I love this. Hmm. We wouldn't expect anything different from the dwarves of Bark and Gooch, would we? Perfect. Yeah, you can go in there. Let's see. Right. Yeah. Hello there. I'm so sorry. Please, um, please come on in. Yeah. I was in the likes of you. Nice part of that one. Been, uh, quite a long time. Yeah. I guess it's true what people are saying. They'll let basically anyone into that one these days, won't they? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't mean that as... As an offence, I'm sure that you've you've got your reason for being here. It's just um, it's been a long time since there's been a human here, <laughs> and you know, just just the other day there was someone else here too. She was um, wasn't a human. She was something else, a creature I've never seen before, asking questions about about the the state of of living here in this town and in this. Kingdom, very strange, they ask me. Yeah. And on the other day, there was also this dwarf who was asking. Actually, they were asking about you. If I'd met you yet. <laughs> All kinds of strange people here in that one. Well, if you got in, if you got past the guard, I guess you, um, you had a reason for it, didn't you? Mm. Anyway, I suppose a uh, a customer is a customer. Oh, what what can I do for you? Oh, you're looking for some gifts. Mm, all right, well, came to the right place. <laughs> Jewelry shop is a wonderful place to buy gifts for people, isn't it? Is this for a uh, a lady friend of yours, perhaps? Oh, she's just a friend. Mm. All right, all right. That's fine. Of course, I don't know you. Don't know, don't know your business at all. Take your word for it. But you're here buying jewelry for her. Okay. Well. Yeah. I. Uh, I suppose I'll show you what I got. You know, my. Uh, my old dad used to run this place. Before he passed, and. Uh, he didn't have a love for humans, you can see that. I mean, a customer is a customer, but you might not see so. Oh, well, I can, I, can, I, can, I can show you what I got, at least. What, you got? Oh. This is, this is a crest of a, of a dwarven chieftain. You've, you've got the mark of a chieftain with you. Oh, I, I am so sorry if I, if I, if I appeared rude before. I, I, I had no, no idea that you were um, such an honoured guest of this place. Uh, of course, of course, I, I, I'll show you anything I got. Yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you my best things, of course. Um, uh, I'm so sorry. Please, please don't tell the chieftains that I was less than, less than hospitable to you, all right? 
Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll make it up to you. I promise. So, such an honored guest. Of course, we can we can come up with a, a very good bargain for you. I mean, I, I I try to you know make all my prices fair, but for someone so special, we'll we'll come up with a good price. All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> well, um, uh, t tell me about your friend. What sort of things are you looking for for her? You're not sure. Okay, well that's that's fine. Is she um, does she like bigger jewelry or more more simple things or possibly going more towards simple? Mm -hmm. All right, I guess to each their own. <laughs> you know, jewelry to a dwarf, it's um, it's almost more about status than it is about fashion. I mean, we we've got pieces that are that are very fashionable as well, of course, but um, we take pride in, in what we wear and most things that we wear, they, um, they tell a story or they tell the world something about us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I, um, I could get you a few of sort of my, my best sellers, my, my pieces that are the most unique, most interesting and the uh, Show you some rules. See if something piques your interest, eh? Okay, sure. Why don't you uh, just have a seat there? You get nice and comfortable, and I'll, uh, I'll grab some pieces for us to look at. All right? Taking the liberty of uh, picking out some of what I would consider the best pieces that I've got. Some, uh, some necklaces and some bracelets and some rings. Alright, so uh, let, me, let me show you what I've got. You can uh, let me know if any of this is sort of what you're looking for. And of course if it doesn't then I've got plenty of other things too. Let's start with um, some necklaces, maybe. Okay, sure, sounds good. Now this is um, one of my favourite pieces. I just finished it not too long ago. It is quite a regal looking necklace. See this, it's a beautiful, beautiful stone necklace here. Now these stones are, uh, they're a type of jasper, a, a semi-precious stone with um, quite wonderful metaphysical properties. Jasper is a stone of the mind. It helps sort of clear the mind and help you make difficult decisions. Things like that gives, gives you that clarity. Jasper has um, very much become known as a stone of nobility, at least amongst dwarves. So, a necklace like this is um, quite a practical gift for someone who's maybe got a lot of decisions to make. But it's also a sign of stature. All these beautifully hand-carved, of course, circular stones here. Um, smaller silver stones in between give that bit of uh, interest and then of course we've got this larger pendant down here beautifully polished can you see there's um there's a bit of variation 
color there too. It's not just a solid grey. It's definitely got some uh, some beautiful marble in there. Yeah, quite a lovely stone. It's a lovely necklace. I do say so myself. Quite a uh, regal color as well. What do you think? This would be a bit too much for her, eh? She likes things a bit simpler. Alright, sure, yeah. I mean, this is definitely a necklace of stature. <laughs> I'm sure that in a dwarven city like this, it won't be around for long. But it's a need not for everyone. Not to worry. I've got some other things that she might like. Here we are. I bet she would like something like this. Much simpler in the design. It's just um, a beautiful chain. Now this is a necklace you could wear longer like this. Or you could also double it up and wear, you know, a multi-strand sort of choker look as well. You can see this necklace has one, two, three different types of chains on here. And uh, they're all interlocked. And it's quite the, uh, the asymmetrical sort of design. Uh, it's not supposed to be all even and uh, orderly. So the necklace that, um, while it is a relatively simple design, it still gives you that bit of intrigue. But of course, with all good asymmetrical designs, although it is not perfectly the same on both sides, it is still balanced. You know what I mean? You've got these two, which are off-centred in there, a bit smaller, and then this larger one over on this side, so you still have the feeling of being at least somewhat balanced as you're putting this chain on. Well, it's still too much for her. Are you sure this is, this is a normal chain? Made of the finest gold, of course. Lined right here in that bin. Yeah, anyone would be quite, uh, quite lucky to wear a chain like this, I would think. Still not her style. Alright, alright, that's fine. Here. That's very lightweight. You know, if you're worried about something being too heavy, that stone necklace I showed you was quite heavy, but this one is much lighter. Very durable as well. No, not for her. Alright, alright, that's fine. We'll find something else, I'm sure. This necklace. Maybe should have started with this one. This is, not only is it um, very lightweight and it's definitely smaller, but this is a very distinctly dwarven design. Yeah, you see this necklace, it's, it's made out of metal, but it's all of these very, very small pieces you can see. All of these little individual things around one flexible cord here. So you've got the illusion of it being sort of a, a plated necklace and yet it's still quite flexible and quite comfortable to wear. All of these individual copper pieces here were handmade, hand stamped right here on that one. You can see on the back here, they're all just made so that it's one, one piece coming down with a little loop there. So it can be woven through a, a bit of cord, a bit of very light, lightweight cord here. Now this is a design. It's, um, it's only come about in the last few years, really, so 
not only is it very dwarven, but it's very, very modern <laughs> as far as style goes. Very right. You can see how that catches the light just beautifully, Mary. Each of those individual little plates. Yeah. And I got this one. I've got it in there. Got it in this sort of copper colour. I've also got it in a gold and a silver. And um, something big right now is antique gold, they're calling it. Yeah, it's, it's gold, but it's um, it's been treated so that it almost looks like it's old. Yeah, people want new jewellery, but they want it to look like it's old. Strange to me. But anyway, this I'm sure your friend would very much appreciate. See, it's um, oh, it's not very big. It's more like a choker, but still adjustable in the back here, so it'll fit comfortably. Got these very small plates up here, and as you go down, they get larger and larger till you get to these centre ones in the middle. Still not very style, really. Well. Maybe let's, uh, let's put a hold on necklaces for now, eh? Maybe we could find something more like a bracelet that she might like. Okay, let's try something else. Right, this bracelet, it's one of my favourites to show. It might look a bit unassuming, but when you get up closer, the detail to it. Quite beautiful, if you ask me. It's three different strands, but all one, all one bracelet. They're all connected back here, you can see. Three different strands that sort of complement each other. These larger round beads, they're a type of jasper called fancy jasper. Polished to perfection, of course. Wouldn't expect anything different from dwarves, would you? And then you've got this strand here that's got these beautiful amber crystals. You can see how that just catches the light. I mean, they're small enough that they're not going to shout at people like at me. But still quite dainty. They certainly sparkle. Then this last strand here is these lovely sort of mauve beads. Sort of pecking up on some of the undertones and some of these fancy jasper. And you've got all sorts of variation in colour there. Think on this very dark green. The lighter green. It's almost clear. To this more sort of Mauve colour almost. That one complemented beautifully by that strand. Now this bracelet you could wear the three strands next to each other like this. Or you can also sort of twist them. Or even sort of braid them if you wanted to so they're a bit more interwoven like that, you see. A lovely bracelet. Beautiful gift too. It's um, it's it's beautiful and elegant without being over the top. If you know what I'm saying? Maybe. Okay. Well, we've got our first matey. That's good. Well, uh, I'll put this to the side. You let me know at the end, right? Okay. I do have this other one too. This is another one of my favourites. It's a brand new one. I don't get to make things like this very often because uh, between you and me, precious gemstones are uh, they're actually a bit in short supply in that one. It's a bit sad really. We used to have all sorts of gemstones that were mined here. Now it's more just precious metals and crystals. Not that, not that crystals and semi-precious stones and things like that aren't also and of course they've got all sorts of wonderful, sort of metaphysical, natural, magical properties. 
But there's something about diamonds or sapphires, things like that. The way that they sparkle. The way that you can stare into their surface and see such a beautiful depth. Kind of beat you like them. Oh, these? Oh, well, these were uh, imported, actually, eh? from uh, Bracken Gulch, our sister city. Yeah. Bracken Gulch, you heard of that? Yeah. That's, um, that's very far from here. East and north, yeah, sort of the easternmost part of the country, by the sea. They are more known for their precious stones. Although they also need the precious metals to put the stones in, don't they? That they get from us. Anyway, so this bracelet, you can see we've got all those beautiful, beautiful sapphires there. And this lovely antique gold case surrounded by all those little diamonds that just sparkle so beautifully. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of those little pieces all interlocked there. Now the nice thing about a bracelet with this design, where you've got the different pieces that are connected, is that you get a sort of flexibility, you know, it, it moves around your wrist. You don't have to make it one shape to fit all wrists, it just sort of moves with you. Very comfortable. And actually quite lightweight too, regardless of those, those gems on there. The metal settings, having them like this with the gaps in there, makes it much easier to wear. Very lovely. Now, of course, because gemstones are a bit rare around these parts, this is one of my more expensive pieces that I've got in my shop right now. But for a uh, favourite guest of the Chieftains, of course, we could, we could come up with a reasonable price, I'm sure. Does it have any... Oh... oh. What an interesting question. No, there's a, there's no magical spells or anything in these stones. These are um, relatively fresh from the earth over in Bracken Gulch. Of course, none of them know that rune casting magic that the elves stole away with. So, uh, no, this, um, this piece, I'm afraid, doesn't have any sort of magical property. Although, you know, I do actually have one bracelet that's quite old. It's from the time before the Civil War. Would you like to see that one? Sure, yeah. Put this one down for now. Here we are. This is a very, very interesting. This bracelet has been in actually the back room of my store for quite a long time. You see, after um, after the Civil War, there were some dwarves from Napwin who chose to fight alongside the elves, and of course the elves, and therefore the dwarves lost. And we dwarves, uh, we can be a bit sore. So there were quite a few dwarves who were um, not very happy about magical items. Magic in general, actually. And uh, most of the magical items in that one disappeared when the elves did. But there were a few that stuck around. This one, my, my dear old dad, sort of hid in the back room for a few decades before taking it out again. I've never really had anyone seriously interested in it. 
Some people like to come in to look at it, but um, not to buy it at least. Now this was a bracelet of protection. See each of these different gemstones. All different colours. I've got a pink one there. The green one. And an orange one here. And a blue one there. And a red. And a purple there. Each of them was um, imbued with a magical spell, like you were talking about, from the elves. I didn't know all that much about, about magic, but I remember my dad working with some uh, spellcasters that were elves. And they said that gemstones were excellent for holding magical energies. Yeah, especially the, the more precious the better, the longer that they lasted. So, so this bracelet, each of these different gemstones holds a different sort of spell. Oh, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what they were. <laughs> Not for the life of me. My dad probably could have, but, uh, so, you know, some of them were for warding off negative energy, you know, protecting your, your energy, things like that, as well as, um, protecting from harm, perhaps reducing the harm from, uh, certain, certain attacks or something like that, so, quite a useful piece, if you're asking me, yeah. I mean, and, and the great thing about a magical item like this is that, for the most part, the person who's wearing it doesn't even necessarily need to know that it's magic. They don't need to know how to work the spells. The caster who originally put the spells in these stones, they did all the work. Whoever wears it, they just get the benefits from it. Yeah, quite a nice deal, really. You'd like this one. Well, that is excellent news. Look at that, we finally found something. Is this for your lady friend or is this for you? <laughs> all right, all right, we have no judgment either way. Do you think your friend would like this? Oh, you would like them to be protected. Oh, I see how it is. Well, I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Got a friend that means a lot to you. Only natural that you'd want them kept safe, right? Right, I'll put this one to the side for you. Now, originally, you um, you mentioned looking at some rings, right? Well, if you'd like, um, if you end up purchasing this, this lovely bracelet. For someone with a crest of a chieftain, with, with the favour of, of a chieftain, we could uh, maybe throw in a ring as well. Yeah, just call it a uh, gesture of goodwill, eh? Sure, yeah, I could show you some rings if you'd like. Okay, great. Let me go get the, uh, the chest of rings here. This is where I keep all of my favourite rings. Got quite the variety in here too. Different sizes, different colours. Some with stones, some without. Different types of metals. Whatever your friend's preferences might be. I bet we could find her a winning ring. Yeah. You know, this one here, this is one of my favourites. Let's see that. 
that's got a beautiful black onyx stone in the middle of it there the shape of the thing has this lovely sort of filigree design at the very end of it and it looks a bit wide there but it's actually you can see quite thin so it's still um still rather lightweight yeah see how beautiful that looks this is one of those rings that could be worn down near the base of your finger or could be worn as in the middle of your finger since the filigree is only, you know, on the top there, it still bends very easily. Lovely, lovely ring. Do you think that's a bit much for your friend? Yeah, all right. Not everyone likes the, the filigree look. So I'm guessing that one's out of the question, eh? <laughs> well, how about something like, um... Oh, this one. This one is lovely. So when you've got that beautiful diamond right in the centre in the uh, teardrop shape. You've got the uh, metal design around it. Also in that sort of wider teardrop. And this one, you've also got a design on the band there. It's not typical of all rings. Sometimes it's just sort of bigger thing in the middle. And you've got a bit of a design on the side as well, it sort of carries it over from the metal case. Now this one is, the, the metal is actually a mix. It's a mix of both silver, but also it's got a different type of metal in it as well. It's called platinum. Yeah. Quite a strong metal, platinum is. Still gives you that lovely shine. It's still considered a precious metal, but much, much stronger than just your normal silver. So this ring will uh, sure to be a family heirloom. It'll last forever. Not that any of these wouldn't, I suppose. They are made by the dwarves, you know. So this is a ring you could wear it facing either way. The teardrop can be pointing towards the end of your finger, or it could be facing in. Got a lovely sparkle there. Or if you were looking for something with a bit of colour, I've got a few stones here that um, more of a semi-precious stone. But you've got some beautiful colour there. It's lovely green. Hmm. Well, this is just a very simple case. It's more of a casual wear ring, I suppose you would say. With some silver wire made in sort of a twisted pattern throughout there. This adds a bit of colour to whatever outfit you may be wearing. And if you like that, you know, that one is the green. I've got this lovely red stone down here as well. This is a crystal. Mined right here on that one. Rounded and of course polished to perfection. Not so much. Alright. Maybe you're looking for something that um, doesn't necessarily have a stone, but tells a story all its own in a different way. How about something like this one? This was a style that was very popular with the elves in the olden days. It's all metal, but it is sort of the cut out, the carved design of a lotus flower. The lotus flower is, um, it's important to many people who, you know, believe in signs and symbols and things and lessons from nature. The lotus flower is, um, it's a sign of purity. But it's also a sign of death and rebirth. 
as the Lotus Flower does. Yeah, sort of a uh, an inner peace, the cycle of life. It's a beautiful ring. You can see, see right through it. This one is also that silver and platinum mix. Yeah. A bit of cajun down the down the side here too. Still very lightweight. Navy. Alright, alright, that's good. Navies are good, I like navies. Otherwise, nope, sort of going down here. Mm -hmm. I'll do it with something like this too. This cute little ring here. I've got it in different sizes too, but uh, this one. It's all metal again, but just a very, very dainty little design. Different shapes in the band there. It almost looks like a crown. I think your finger is where it's just a tiny little crown there. Mm. This one is um, better suited for a smaller finger. You know, like your pinky finger or something. And like I said, it's more of one of those midi rings. So much night. That's fine, that's fine. Hmm. Oh, look, this little gold here. Oh. This is quite a lovely one here. Now, this ring, you've got almost two different designs, two different little parts that are sort of coming together in the middle. This one is, um, it's based on two different spirits. Yeah, from very, very long ago, the elves believed in spirits of nature, and some spirits exist in tandem. You've got things that pitch and pull, light and dark, not necessarily good and bad, but just difference. It um, balances out. Yeah, so this ring, it's sort of a sign of balance sign of making peace with the way that the world is. A sign of looking for the good in a situation, always. Looking for what the world and the spirits and life and fate may be trying to teach you. Quite fascinating if you ask me. Oh, you like this one? Wonderful. You know what, why don't I put this to the side too? We'll wrap it up with the other. All right, great. Yeah. Would you like to look at any of these other ones? Just that one for now. Not to worry. Put these away then. Quite a lovely piece, isn't it? Not just one that's um, obviously got that protection magic, but it also is quite lovely. I hope your friend likes it. Yeah, I think I made some good, good decisions here today. I think she'll be quite pleased with your gifts. Now, um, let me just get out a lid on the pouch for you here. There we go. Go in here. We'll just put them both in here. Keep them nice and safe, eh? And whatever else you're doing on your journey, they'll have this nice little pouch. Keep them safe. There we go. Let's put them in here too. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that I could uh, help you find something for your friend. Oh yes, we do need a, a price, don't we? Well, here's the thing. A magical item like this is very rare. A 
alchemist can know nowadays. However, here in that one, there's really not much of a, uh, a demand for things like that. Like I said, that bracelet has been in my shop for, well, 150 years, isn't it? So, uh, you know what? I'll give you the bracelet and the ring. Five gold. How does that sound? Sounds like a deal. All right, wonderful. Here you are. Well, pleasure doing business with you. I hope whatever other business brought you to that one, you uh, you find what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you um, if you think of anyone else that you need a gift for, I've got plenty of things around here that I could show you. <laughs> but for now, I suppose we will uh, part ways. I hope you enjoy the rest of your time here in that one. Have a great day.